Hi, my name is Sean Hennigan, and today we're going to talk about something that I think is a universal truth of the human condition. I think ever since man walked the face of the earth, there's several things that exist in all cultures. One of them is laughter. No matter what makes us laugh, laughter is a primary aspect of being human. The second one is music. Even if we didn't have instruments, we would bang rocks, tap ourselves, hum, sing. I think that's something that's also universal. And the third one is love, the desire to feel close and connected both in an intimate way, as well as in friendships and with family members. Today, we're going to talk about love. A lot of people seem to believe that there is one, the twin flame, the soulmate, the one person on earth that they're here to love on this planet. That seems a little limiting to me. They say that home is where the heart is, and so we're going to look at the house that love built. We're going to see what it takes to make a loving relationship that everyone can enjoy. And so when we look for a home, is there only one house you can live in? Is there only one place that's the right place to live? And if you miss it, you'll be miserable for the rest of your life? Or if you change the course in your life, will you never have a home that you're comfortable in again? I don't believe that. I think there's a lot of places that we can really be comfortable in. Now, some of them we just know automatically, this is not for me. Other places we can say, you know what? I could really see myself here. So that's what we're going to discuss today. How to build a move-in condition relationship. No fixer-uppers anymore. Many people will start the relationship going, well, I like this person, but I think if they did that or if they shifted that or dressed this way or talked this way or did a different profession, then they'd be just right. I think the best idea is to find the place, in this case, the person that makes you feel that you're at home right off the bat. Now, the first aspect, I believe, is what they call in real estate curb appeal. And that means, realistically, most people aren't at a party, look across the room and go, wow, that person looks like they have a good heart and integrity. Most people go, oh, that person's hot. I want to get to know them better. And that's how it starts more often than not, is just the initial curb appeal. Now, the other thing that a lot of people don't look at when they're looking at a home initially is something that's very important, specifically in my analogy, for relationships. And that is the foundation. Now, I believe the foundation is made up of four very distinct characteristics. The first one is friendship. Now, I'm not talking about the friendship where you get to go to the front row and be at a, go to a concert and see the show from the best perspective. I don't mean seeing your favorite movie or getting taken out to dinner. Those things are all great and an important aspect of friendship. As cliche as it is, the kind of friendship I'm talking about here, though, is the kind of friendship where you go, geez, I got to go to the DMV to register my car. I forgot and I'm late. And your friend says, hey, let me tag along with you. And not because they think it's going to be enjoyable, but because they like to be with you. Oh, I got a traffic ticket. I got to go to court. Hey, let me come along with you. I'll give you some support. That's what real friendship is. And I think that's something that grows more and more in a healthy move-in relationship. The second aspect of the foundation, I believe, is trust, integrity, together. And, and what I mean is, is once you get to know somebody, are they the kind of person that would lie? Would they cheat? Would they steal? And would they hurt someone? And if so, what would cause them to make those choices? Some people say, well, I would never do those things. Well, under certain circumstances, in order to protect people that you love, you may do things that you wouldn't normally do. That's what integrity and trust are about. Trust is, if you do do something that is outside the realm of your integrity, would you talk to me about it? Which leads to the third aspect of the foundation, which is communication. Now, there's a variety of communication styles. Not everyone suits every other person. However, it is important to get a communication style that works with your partner. Some people like to talk. Some people like to listen. Some people are a little bit of both. So as long as the communication style works for both people. Oftentimes, I've had people come to me when talking to me about what they need to do in order to build a healthy relationship. And the first person will come in and say, I'm in a new relationship and I talk to this person three times a week. It's driving me crazy. I'm so busy. I don't have time to talk that much. That person will get up, walk out. The next person will come in and they'll say, I'm in a new relationship. We talk three times a week. I can't take it. It hurts my feelings. I want them to be the first voice I hear every morning when I wake up. And I want them to be the last voice that I hear every night before I go to sleep. Now, neither one of these people is wrong. It's just they have different communication needs. So that's the first thing you can look for as far as communication style is the frequency and the type of communication that you have with your partner working for both of you. And the fourth aspect of my foundation for a healthy relationship is respect. Do you respect how I carry myself in this world? Do you respect how I make decisions? Do you respect what I do for a living? If you have those four things, friendship, trust and integrity, communication, and respect, you have a healthy foundation for any kind of relationship, whether it be business, friendship, or in today's case, romance. Now let's build our house a little bit bigger than that. The foundation is great, it should be solid, but there's more to it than that. 
Now, in my analogy here, when I speak of water, I'm using that as a parallel for emotions because emotions are very important. Even if you feel you don't have them or if you're with somebody that's guarded or analytical, emotions still run. Maybe they're deep, maybe they're not seen a lot, but they're still there. So that's the first aspect of a move-in condition relationship, your roof. So what kind of roof? You don't want something that leaks through easily, that saturates things and destroys things within your home, do you? And what that means on an emotional basis is this. Sometimes people are overly affected by outside circumstances, sometimes that are directly aimed at them, sometimes in things that have nothing to do with them. So if they get cut off in traffic, they're angry constantly. Every time they come home, they're already in a bad mood because they've been through traffic. Or they've had a bad day at work, somebody said something consciously or unconsciously that hurt their feelings. So if you let other people's perceptions or other people's moods penetrate you too much, it's going to have a profound effect on the relationship itself. So the best idea here is to have a sturdy roof that protects the person, but by the same token, doesn't allow too many things in and keeps you safe and warm. The next aspect is the entryway, the door. Is it barred with lots of bolts and locks and chains? Or is it wide open so anybody can come in and out of it? Well, if it's too secure, then that means that they don't like to let things in very easily. It means that they don't feel safe and they don't feel comfortable. However, by the same token, if you meet somebody and the door's wide open all the time, that means they're probably not looking for a monogamous relationship, at least at this point. The next aspect of a move-in condition relationship, the windows in the house. They say the eyes are the windows to the soul. And what I mean by that is, is how we view the outside world. How do we see things? And when you look in someone's eyes, are they with you? Are they staring off into space? Are they glazed over? Or do they have a clear vision of you and who you really are? We can all look at the same object, the same circumstance, the same movie, read the same book, and all have different subjective perspectives of that. So it's good when you're in a relationship that the, the perceptions that you share are similar. Or if they're not similar, they're not directly in conflict with one another. Because that conflict will eventually rise and take a greater role in the relationship. The next aspect of our house that love built is the plumbing. Once again, here, plumbing represents the emotions and water. You don't want to get out of the bathtub and watch the water slowly going down long after the shower's over. Or when you flush your toilet, you don't want things that you were in there before to still be there for a long time or perhaps even after the flush is complete. So how does that work emotionally? What that means is, is if the person that you're hooking up with, if the person you're connecting to, in order to build a healthy relationship, you want them to be able to release things. You want them to be able to move through things emotionally that are very difficult for them. Sometimes it can be ill health, loss of a loved one, loss of a job any kind of loss. Now, that doesn't mean that you just, hey, forget all about it and hey, no big deal. What it means is, is that you release it in a healthy fashion. And that's specifically true of past grievances. Many times people will hold on to something that someone did early on in the relationship and years later still have grievances about that. If you cannot tear down those walls, if you cannot release the past grievances, you cannot have a healthy relationship. It takes away from trust being built. The next aspect is the electrical system. What vibration is the person that you're with? Many people are very high energy and intense. Other people are much more lackadaisical, mellow, or just calm by their nature. Now, neither one of those is right or wrong. However, you need to make sure that the frequency with which you communicate and which you connect with your partner is workable. Because if you're somebody that's going to overload their circuits, if you're going to be too intense for me, it's too much, then perhaps this isn't the place for you to move into. So, remember, next time you're looking for a relationship, you got to make sure it's a move-in condition relationship. Check your foundation. Make sure that you have the four components of it. Friendship, trust and integrity, communication, and respect. Make sure to check the roof and make sure that everything won't permeate the relationship. Soak it and make it really uncomfortable and unpleasant. Make sure that the windows, how you perceive things, how you see things, remain in alignment with one another. Make sure your door is not too well secured so that no one can come in and out, but also by the same token, you don't want to leave it wide open so anybody can just wander in anytime they feel like it. And also, make sure that the plumbing is good, that the energy comes in and goes out, that the flow of emotions is healthy and moves in the way that you desire it to. And also make sure the, the electrical is where you want it to be, the chemistry, the energy. Make sure that the vibration of the person you're with matches your energy so that you don't overwhelm or underwhelm that the person you're with. If you follow these simple techniques, I believe you can have a move-in condition relationship that is a home for many years to come. Wishing you clarity, harmony, and fulfillment today and every day. Thanks for your time. And remember, no more fixer-uppers.